Hi, I'm Peter Prevos, and welcome to the screencast for Chapter 6 of Data Science for Water Utilities. In the previous chapter, we saw how to visualize data to share the results of analysis. In this chapter, I will show you how to use R Markdown to share complete reports using literate programming. This approach, approach solves the problem of having to copy and paste results and graphs and, and uh, text and so on to your report or article every time the data or the analysis changes. Literate programming integrates the analysis, the data and the text into a unified results. So let's show you an example before we get started with our water quality case study. You go to file and ask for a new file and in this case not we are looking for an R markdown file. Now first we need to install some packages so just say yes and that will only take a few seconds. Now R markdown is a plain text file where we can combine R code also Python code or um, we can combine text and images and then that's basic text is then used to generate the output. So let's give an example. The title shall be called just test. The author, author shall be me. And we can enter a date and the document in this case will make it an HTML document. Click OK. Now our studio generates this example for you, which is a really good way to help you find out how to use this. First, we see the text between dashes. This is the metadata. So for example, we have the title, the author, the date, and the output shall be a HTML document. Then we set some, this is R code. So anything after three back ticks and then the letter R, that means, hey, I've got some R code. This is, uh, it's called setup and it's not included in the output. So there's some parameters in there to use. We then set some knitter options and knitter is the package that knits this plain text in this case to a html document and the options for each chunk is that echo equals true that means that in the output we will also see the code that's written but we can also change uh, switch that off there are a lot of other uh, parameters you can use to really fine-tune your document now here we start with two hashtags which in markdown means that this is a heading so this is a heading level two for those of you who know html this will be a h2 tag which we call our, our markdown then there is a bit of text which has a hyperlink we can also do bold by adding two asterisks before and after the text and here is a chunk of code so we have three backticks, then the letter R to denote the language that we're using, and we call that cars. And what we're doing is we're creating a summary of the built-in data set cars. Another heading, and here some text, and in that case we are including a plot. So this is the basics of our markdown. So we have the metadata, we have the document options, then there is the markdown text, and these blocks here are code blocks, and they, uh, they contain, in this case, the R code. When we get to the case today, I'll show you how to generate these things. Up here, we have the knit button. So knitting means that all the code is evaluated and translated to markdown. The output of that is then moved to the pandoc package that is built in with RStudio and the pandoc package converts the text either to HTML or to, to Word or to PowerPoint. Uh, if you have a LaTeX installed, you can also create uh, PDF documents. So it is possible to write journal articles and whole books using the R markdown syntax. So let's hit knit. We need to give it a name. So again, let's call it test so we can delete it later. Save and the knitting starts. Right, minimizing my screen, we see here that I've got a new screen popped up and that's my HTML document. That is also saved to disk because we have test.html sitting in the files. Here's the, the headers, the metadata, 
Um, you see the code here, summary cars and the output, a plot, and the plot had a separate option, which is echo equals false. So the code of the plot is not there, but the plot is nicely included. So we can generate a website this way. And some people use our markdown to create their blogs. There are other literate programming uh, methods. If you for Emacs users, you can use org mode, which is what I use to create the data science for water utilities book. So let's go to our case study and I'll show you a bit more about the power of using literate programming. So go to scripts and there is a chlorine taste.rmd file for your perusal. Now, this is structured the same way as the previous document, but with some different options. So we have the metadata up here with a title and author and the date. But you see the, the date here between the quotation marks. I have a backtick and then an R, which in the case we have R code, and then the sys date function, which means that the date of the output will always be the date that the output was generated. Then the output shall be a PowerPoint presentation. And I've included here another parameter called reference doc. And that reference doc points to a template in PowerPoint. So this could be your corporate PowerPoint template, for example. The indentation of two spaces and here one, two, three, four spaces is very important. So because it's uh, sensitive to that. This data format is called YAML, if you want to learn more about this. Then we set some document options. The echo is false. I don't want the code to be shown in the output. I don't want any R warnings or R messages to be shown. And the graphics output has to have 300 dots per inch. My first slide starts with a single hashtag. I'm calling that slide problem statement with some dot points. Then I have my laboratory data. And here's some R code. You insert these chunks, as some people call them, with Control Alt I, and you create here some R code, which you can run just like any other R code. So let's get rid of this. So this code chunk is not shown on the slide because my echo equals false. But it doesn't also it doesn't create any output either. We're just creating uh, loading the data set and filtering for chlorine. So now the output of this slide is um, dividing it in columns, which is this slightly weird syntax. So there are six semicolons and then dot columns between um, curly braces, and then my first column with three semicolons, closing the column, opening a new column closing the column, etc. So here's some text. If I start it with a dash, it will become a dot point. If I want to indent it, I add four spaces. Um, here, what I've done is actually insert some R code. So the lowest date and the highest date. So in other words, if my data set changes, the dates will change in the slide. So it becomes a dynamic report. And here's some fixed text. Then I'm adding an image as well for good measure which is in this case downloaded directly from the internet. Next slide, I have a code chunk, nothing else, um, which will call ggplot, and you can reverse engineer that at your leisure. It has a width of nine inches and a height of four inches. So that's one slide. Then my next slide, I'm doing some calculations of which uh, suburbs, um, oh, I'm grouping it by suburb and I'm creating some summary statistics and the knitter double uh, semicolon cable. Cable is a function that creates nice looking tables. So I'm putting the chlorine uh, results in that table with some column names, etc. Number of digits as well to create, create a nice uniform output. So I can what I can do, if I click this little triangle here, the little down pointing triangle, I run all the code chunks above this one. And here I can run the current one. So you will see this table, the output showing neatly down there. Close that for a moment. And then in my last slide, 
I have conclusions and recommendations, etc. So let's knit this um, thing together. So it starts to knit, creates all the markdown, and then the markdown is translated to PowerPoint. Now I need to download this file. Um, I don't have PowerPoint in my computer, but I can open this in my trusty LibreOffice. And there we go. This is a dynamically generated PowerPoint file. I have a cover page, which is my title and author, and the image, etc. that's all embedded in the template. The problem statement here is that the two column chart with the image downloaded from the web, uh, the dynamically generated dates, a graph, a table, and some conclusions. Using this method is a very powerful way to dynamically link any output to a data set. I, in my old professional life, use this, for example, to create regulatory, regulatory reporting by just linking it to another data set every time I need to change the time or the area. So this is a summary of using literate programming within our studio. If you'd like to know more, um, look at the additional resources on the website. Uh, feel free to read my book or contact me if you've got any questions about the content on this website or this screencast overall. In the next screencast, we'll start using another data set and start analyzing customer data.